Hi, everybody. Joe Chaffee here, Weather in 5, 5 Days and 5 Minutes. And uh, the Joe and Joe Weather Show will be back Sunday night at 7.35 p.m. We'll be probably dealing with severe weather uh, in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic states. And we'll look to the week ahead and the 4th of July. So that's tomorrow night at 7.35 p.m. Sunday night on the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast. Got a uh, busy evening here as we have uh, some severe thunderstorm watches uh, in southeastern Pennsylvania, also in northern West Virginia and western Maryland, and in southwest Ohio and a small portion of southeast Indiana and northeast Kentucky. Heat advisories from southeast Virginia uh, continuing down through Georgia, and then they expand across the central and western Gulf states. We've got excessive heat warnings up for parts of Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, western Tennessee, and western Mississippi. So it's uh, in the throes of summertime. We also have tornado watches up, those two yellow areas. I should also mention for south central Pennsylvania, as well as southwest Pennsylvania and southeast Ohio. The short range models are not really handling this very well today. Uh, they hardly show anything, whereas we do have, and you can see from the satellite loop, lightning strikes moving across central Pennsylvania down into West Virginia as uh, a line of storms is moving eastward. Also some storms in central Indiana. We've got some scattered thunderstorms uh, throughout much of the state of Florida and also scattered around uh, parts of the Gulf states and parts of the southeast from South Carolina west back over into Mississippi. And here's what it looks like on the radar. Uh, this line here uh, that is uh, approaching I-81 and moving eastward. Also, these storms as of uh, 6.02 p.m. Eastern time surrounding Harrisburg. Or there's even a tornado warning north of Harrisburg that has uh, popped in and out uh, on the radar, that little red box that you see. And then you also see a couple of li another line in southeast Ohio and another cluster in southeast Indiana and southwestern parts of Ohio. In Maine, it's raining as it is in New Hampshire, also uh, throughout much of Massachusetts and into Northwest Connecticut. All of this is part of this transition that we did today as we uh, went from a nice dry air mass to a very warm and humid air mass to a hot air mass, a hot and humid air mass uh, come Sunday. So the Storm Prediction Center uh, at the moment, again, this is at 6.02 p.m. Eastern, this is as of 6.05 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're watching this later on tonight, obviously everything is dated here, uh, certainly as far as severe weather is concerned. So go to weather.gov to get the, get the latest weather information. You can see the uh, watch boxes here, Southeast PA, a uh, small portion of Western New Jersey, uh, then back through um, West Central and Western Maryland, and then westward uh, into Ohio. Uh, tornado watches up Actually, they've split the tornado watch in two, one for South Central PA, the other one for Southwest PA and Southeast Ohio. And it is going to wind up being a busy day come tomorrow uh, as uh, we have severe weather risk. And we'll take a look at that. Uh, you'll see that uh, the forecast hasn't really changed much in the last two days. We have a slight risk from Maine to North Carolina, a marginal risk to the west, uh, back through upstate New York and Pennsylvania. Uh, into uh, West Virginia, Eastern um, Kentucky, Eastern Tennessee, and easternmost Georgia. And also up in the plains, we have a marginal to slight risk from Colorado all the way up into Montana. We're in one of these situations that if these thunderstorms, if they're moving slowly, they're going to produce to double what the forecast rain amounts are. And for southern and southeastern New England, down into the coastal mid Atlantic, we're looking at anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half. Again, locally higher amounts and some heavier storms. Uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half extends down the southeast coast into northern Florida, also even into south Florida. And then we have an area of heavy rain again, an inch and a half to some two and a half inch amounts, Minnesota to Wisconsin, Iowa, down into Missouri. We know how wet it's been up in the upper Mississippi Valley. It's the complete opposite of where we were last year. So we're going to look at I'm going to use the GFS because it actually has the better radar representation of what's going on right now as we have uh, this line moving eastward. And what's going to happen is that the line's going to weaken some, but I think enough of it holds together that it impacts uh, parts of New Jersey and southeastern New England. I don't think it's going to be anything crazy uh, as these thunderstorms will be in weakening mode during the overnight. And then for tomorrow, as we wait for this cold front to come through and the upper trough that goes with it, uh, showers and thunderstorms, and I think we're probably going to see some uh, some pretty strong storms form ahead of this front. 
The only question in my mind is where they set up and how they set up on the radar. And you can see the GFS actually has a cluster by early afternoon over Long Island, New Jersey, uh, and into Connecticut. And I think that's re in response to the daytime heating tomorrow morning, which should happen fairly quickly. And we'll see temperatures push up above 90 uh, into early afternoon before any storms develop. And then we'll have the main line go by in the afternoon and evening. Uh, and we should also mention, too, that inside that slight risk zone that we showed you, there's also a 2% tornado risk. Once that front goes by, we've got nice dry air coming in for Monday and for Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday will start to turn very warm and humid again. And I think that's going to continue probably into Thursday, the 4th of July, when we may want to throw in the chance that there could be uh, some scattered thunderstorms, at least from what we see at this point. I just want to uh, touch on uh, Hurricane Barrel, uh, the first hurricane of the season. And it's been a long time since we've had a, a hurricane in June let alone one that may become a major hurricane by this time tomorrow night. Uh, it is at 10.0 um, north, 48.4 west, and moving westward. The top winds are 75 miles an hour, moving west at 22 miles per hour. And this uh, storm, this hurricane, is likely to become a major hurricane before it reaches uh, the windward islands tomorrow night or early Monday morning. So it's just kind of plodding along here and doing something that hurricanes don't normally do in the month of June is to uh, get into a rapid strengthening mode. Very well-defined uh, system here. The core is well-defined. We see excellent uh, outflow. You'll notice the feathering on the satellite loop here, uh, always an indication that the storm is uh, 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 well-organized and that it's undergoing some strengthening. And as far as uh, some of the model guidance here, just to show you that a number of the models have this has a uh, category three or higher hurricane uh, by tomorrow night. Uh, and even one model takes it up as high as a category four. So I think the Hurricane Center is spot on on this. And then we have a, a slow weakening as it continues to move westward across the Caribbean. The wind shear is unusually light over the hurricane right now. But there are stronger winds in the Caribbean Sea, so that may weaken this a bit. But the general track is going to be to the west-northwest once it gets into the Caribbean. I don't, it's not a threat to the East Coast. Uh, it's not a threat to Florida or the Bahamas. We'll have to see what holds together as to whether eventually something gets into the Southwest Gulf, which we've already had one storm that has done that. Uh, so uh, something that we'll be watching. It's not usual that we have a hurricane on the map going into the 4th of July, but you know what? A lot of weird things have been happening, like severe thunderstorm warnings up in northern Alaska, furthest north that they ever had an issue with severe thunderstorm warning. That just happened a couple of days ago. So uh, we'll be watching these uh, storms tonight on the radar, as you can see it here. Uh, again, just a reminder, the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast tomorrow, Sunday night at 7.35 p.m. Eastern time. We'll see you then.